good morning my dear students today i am going to teach you the mcqs of ray optics and optical instruments okay so here some of the uh, synopsis that's needed for your uh, solving the questions that i have written so after you know explanation of this one you take the snapshot so that you can refer to it once again okay so already i have sent uh, you know the mcqs uh, questions uh, so i expected you to uh, take the print out and sit with that so then only you can understand whatever i ex explain here because since i do the board work so i am not writing the questions the questions must be with you so i too will be having a copy of questions so i am discussing each and every questions that i have uh, taken okay so i hope you have uh, the uh, questions hmm? okay fine so now little bit of uh, synopsis i'll explain just to recall the concepts so here refraction so will actually the deleted portions i am not teaching because we don't have much time in one session one and a half hours i can't teach all the synopsis and the questions it's very difficult so deleted portion i left remaining that's needed for cet i am going to explain okay fine so try to recall refraction so refraction so it is a phenomenon of bending of light when it travels from one medium to another medium okay generally the medium we consider you know since there will be difference say like air air refractive index is taken to be 1 okay and for water you know the refractive index is 1.33 that is 4 by 3 okay likewise for glass generally 1.5 it need not be exactly equal to 1 1.5 but you know uh, so generally we consider it as 1.5 okay fine now when the light travels from rarer to denser medium optical denser okay then light will bend towards the normal you see this is n o n dash is the normal so light will bend this is the refracted ray which one ob is the refracted ray bends towards the normal so the angle of refraction is r angle of incidence is i okay so light is traveling from rarer to denser let n1 be the refractive index so there are two notations we use for refractive index either n or mu okay so you can use any of the two here so n1 is the refractive index of the first medium n2 is the refractive index of the second medium when the light travels from rarer to denser it bends towards the normal so angle of incidence is greater than angle of refraction okay then angle of deviation see this is a light direction in which light would have been traveled in the absence of second medium so how much this ref, uh, you know light ray deviated this is d here okay how much is d whole thing here i minus this r so that is the angle of deviation when light travels from rarer to denser i minus r okay if the light ray travels from denser to rarer then light ray will bend away from the normal in the second medium okay so this is the angle of refraction so r is greater than i now so angle of deviation is how much it is r minus i okay fine now next is law there are two laws governing this refraction one is the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal all you know the which is at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane that is what a law of refraction first law of refraction second law of refraction is snell's law okay what it says so now for a given pair of media and for a given wavelength of light the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is constant okay which is equal to represent that constant is represented by n to 
uh, relative refractive index that is of second medium with respect to first medium so this uh, symbol you know it's for relative refractive index okay fine now i'll come back to this one now we'll see what is absolute refractive index so absolute refractive index it is a refractive index of that particular medium okay that gives the velocity of light in that medium so n is equal to c by v n is equal to c by v where c is the speed of light in air or vacuum you know it is 3 into 10 per 8 meter per second and v is the velocity of light in the medium when it travels from say rarer to denser the refractive index of the denser medium is more so velocity of light in that medium is less okay so larger the refractive index lesser will be the speed of light in that medium okay so n generally it is more for diamond 2.4 okay so there the velocity is very less understood okay so now uh, therefore n is refractive index is inversely proportional to velocity speed okay fine then n to 1 relative refractive index can be written as n2 by n1 which is also equal to n2 absolute refractive index of second medium to the first medium okay so if you substitute n2 as c by v2 and n1 as c by v1 we get the ratio v1 by v2 n2 by uh, n1 is v1 by v2 reciprocal of that okay n and that's why i wrote n and v are what inversely proportional to each other okay fine then uh, velocity of light is also given by f into lambda you know okay so if i substitute both here f into lambda 2 f into lambda 1 you observe that the frequency is same this is another important thing you must keep in mind whenever light or sound travels from one medium to another medium the physical quantity that remains constant is frequency it won't change it is actually the number of waves emitted right per second so that will not change when it travels from one medium to another medium okay so the frequency will get cancelled so velocity and wavelength are directly proportional that's also important thing velocity and wavelength are directly proportional okay a which which color uh, you know travels faster in a given medium the one with larger wavelength okay that is red okay red is having larger wavelength violet is having shorter wavelength okay so <laughs> that's why n is directly proportional to 1 by v or n is inversely proportional to v n is inversely proportional to wavelength refractive index and wavelength of light again they are inversely proportional next normal shift normal shift so whenever one observer sees some object from one medium object is is in another medium say denser medium then the object position will be shifted there is apparent shift okay and this is called a normal shift so if this is a object light ray one ray along the normal travel straight without deviation one more ray if you consider it will bend in the rarer medium away from the normal if you extrapolate it back the two rays will meet at point o, o dash that is the apparent position of the object when observer sees this object you know in rarer medium he is watching the object in the denser medium then the object will shift towards the observer okay maybe some some object inside the river seen by an observer in air so the object will be shifted towards him he feels that the width the length is shorter in water okay this is so how much is a normal shift taking place which is thickness real depth of see this is a object real position of the object real depth this is a thickness from the surface t into 1 minus 1 by n n is a refractive index this is the equation for normal shift okay then now uh, then how to find out this uh, refractive index for a plane surface it is real depth by apparent depth this is only when the object is in the denser medium observer is in the rarer medium okay so if otherwise takes place say like a swimmer inside the uh, water he is the observer he is watching bird 
bird is in the rarer medium then reverse takes place this will be the reverse case then what happens n is apparent depth by real depth it will become okay you have to keep that in mind you have to observe whether the problem is observer is in denser medium object in rarer medium or reverse okay you have to be very careful i have included such questions so that you can understand while solving okay next total internal reflection this is a phenomenon taking place when light travels from denser to rarer see denser to rarer see when the light travels from denser to rarer at one particular angle called critical angle light will not come out in the second medium okay like this instead it will graze the surface can you see here i don't know how far you can see but i don't have any other go so this light ray grazes like this okay so angle of refraction in that case 90 degree okay so if air is this medium so n is also 1 okay this is denser medium if the angle of incidence is greater than critical angle light will never come in second medium it uh, instead it will undergo reflection in the same medium we call that phenomenon as total internal reflection okay this one so for uh, when such condition critical angle and refractive index they are related by n is equal to 1 by sin c just use nels law sin i by sin r is n2 by n1 okay n2 is air so 1 n1 is let it be n sin r see here angle uh, is 90 degree sin of 90 degree is 1 so you get n is equal to 1 by sin c very important simple equation okay that is see here n is equal to 1 by sin c it's for critical angle and refractive index they are related by this equation okay next is prism see once this over you can take the uh, screenshot of this one once uh, everything is completed i could not uh, fill everything here little bit is remaining that i will explain later ha huh? next is prism and say here is a principal section one part of the prism okay so a b c a represents angle of the prism sometimes it is also called a refracting angle you have to be careful okay refracting angle ha huh? same thing uh, okay and uh, one more thing for equilateral prism uh, that angle of prism is 60 degree okay that also you must keep in mind huh? and this is a base of the prism b c light ray enter uh, falls on one of the you know reflecting surface or refracting surface there are two refracting surfaces here okay angle of incidence say i1 angle of refraction r1 the light ray travels inside the prism and will come out uh, with an angle of emergence sometimes e also we call it or i2 and angle of incidence at the second surface we took it as r2 for convenience huh? so deviation the light ray would have traveled like this in the absence of prism so deviation is i1 plus i2 minus a angle of the prism but angle of the prism is how much it is r1 plus r2 you must keep in mind this one r1 plus r2 is this angle of prism whatever it may be these two angles should be added to give angle of prism okay yes then at minimum deviation minimum deviation is the case at which the light ray travels parallel to the base of the prism okay exactly parallel so that r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r i1 is equal to i2 is equal to i so naturally a becomes r plus r 2r so r is a by 2 angle of refraction r is a by 2 both r1 and r2 are equal that time okay then i1 is equal to i2 is equal to i okay so you can also have therefore refractive index of the prism alone if you want you take it as n okay you sometimes they give questions like prism is uh, put it in inside water okay then this is a refractive index of water you have to take n1 surrounding medium's refractive index okay n water uh, and this is the n2 is a refractive index of the prism if this is air don't bother you just take it as n just take this ratio